No one's born being good at all things. You become good at things through hard work. You're not a varsity athlete the first time you play a new sport. You don't hear every note the first time you sing a song. You've got to practice. The same principle applies to your schoolwork. You might have to do a, a math problem a few times before you get it right. You might have to read something a few times before you understand it. You definitely have to do a few drafts of a paper before it's good enough to hand in. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. I do that every day. Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength because it shows you have the courage to admit when you don't know something and that then allows you to learn something new. So find an adult that you trust, a parent, a grandparent, a, or teacher, a coach or a counselor, and ask them to help you stay on track to meet your goals. And even when you're struggling, even when you're discouraged and you feel like other people have given up on you, don't ever give up on yourself because when you give up on yourself, you give up on your country. The story of America isn't about who quit when things got tough. It's about people who kept going, who tried harder, who loved their country too much to do anything less than their best. It's the story of students who sat where you sit 250 years ago and went on to wage a revolution and they founded this nation. Young people. Students who sat where you sit 75 years ago who overcame a depression and won a war, war, war. Who fought for civil rights and put a man on the moon. Students who sat where you sit 20 years ago who founded Google and Twitter and Facebook and changed the way we communicate with each other. So today, I want to ask all of you, what's your contribution going to be? What problems are you going to solve? What discoveries will you make? What will a president who, who comes here in 20 or 50 years or 100 years say about what you did for this country? Now, your families, your teachers, and I are going, doing everything we can to make sure you have the education you need to to answer these questions. I'm working hard to fix your classrooms and get you the books and equipment and the computers you need to learn, but you've got to do your part too. So I expect all of you to get serious this year. I expect you to put your best effort into everything you do. I expect great things from each of you. Okay, and then the three questions you're gonna answer. In paragraph one, former President Obama says you're not a varsity athlete the first time you play a new sport. You don't hit every note the first time you sing a song. Why does he include these examples? How do they contribute to the meaning of that paragraph? Use evidence from the text. Number two, in paragraph four, former President Obama repeats the phrase, students who sat where you sit. Why does he include this phrase? How does it add meaning to this excerpt? Use evidence from the text. And question number three, what do you notice about the structure of this paragraph five? How does it add meaning to this excerpt from the speech? Use evidence from the text. For number five, they're asking you, how did he set it up? What do, what do you notice? What is he doing over and over in paragraph five?